for my latest job, I received a couple of Weber carburetors and the uh, carburetors, along with the carburetors, he also sent quite a few fittings and internal parts that he also wanted vapor blasted. Now, the couple of the parts he sent were what you see right here. Uh, these are banjo fittings and they're comprised of steel and brass. Uh, this one's all steel and this one has a steel tube with a, this is actually cast brass. Um, you can't see the brass, now even though it looks like brass, that's actually yellow chromate. It looks a lot like, it looks a, lot like uh, a high finish on brass. Anyway, the problem with vapor blasting a fitting like this is whenever you are finished vapor blasting, it looks really nice, but now you have an unprotected surface that as soon as you put it back into use, it's going to immediately start corroding again. And that's what happens with this. This is so clean. If I was just to put any kind of water on it, it would immediately start turning red within five minutes. Uh, I mean, even less than five minutes, one or two minutes, that will start um, turning red with rust. So to stop that, I decided to replate these for the for my customer. Now this is not something I usually do here. I don't. I'm not a plating shop. Uh, but this is kind of just something I mess around with and I thought it would make a good video to show you guys how this works and how at least how I do it. And so I'm going to show you how I process this part. This one is already finished. I did this one last night and it turned out very nice. That's just the way it's supposed to be and it replicates uh, the old style cadmium finish they used on carburetors. This one's going to turn out the same even though this it's not cast brass, it's cast steel, it's still going to turn out the same. Uh, I have a video that's already on YouTube that shows you the setup on how to plate. Um, it's, called, it's called zinc plating on the cheap, or yeah, it's called zinc plating on the cheap and applying yellow chromate. And it shows you how to set up this very with very very simple uh, you know it's a very simple setup and tells you where to source the zinc anodes for it and where to get the chemicals I mean it's if you even want to call them chemicals you can get it at the grocery store it's just white vinegar and zinc I'll tell you where to get that but it's in the other video take a look at that I'll put a link in the description so you could go back and, and view that and to, to do your own setup it's real very simple with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start on this again, and then too I'll show you how I prep these parts before they go into the plating bath. So we're going to get started here. <clears throat> I'm going to do a couple steps beforehand. Just to make sure the part's clean. I know the part's clean already because I just vapor blasted it, but I'm just going to show you this anyway. This is kind, kind of just to recap on what I showed in the last video. This, I don't want to touch it because I don't want to get any oil on it. But I put this uh, bottle says RODI on it, that's reverse osmosis deionized water. Distilled water works just as good and you can pick that up of course in any store too. You'll notice on this that the, the water is sheeting over that, there's no water beating up. That means there's, the surface tension has been reduced, it's, it's very very clean and that's what you need for a plate, otherwise you're going to get spots and weird stuff happening on your part. You need to have it where the water covers the entire part. That means there's no oil on it. I'm going to put it in the plating solution. And you'll see it immediately starts bubbling. It's, that's how clean it is. Even without power applied. I'm going to apply the power now. And you can see we're up. I'm going to turn down the amperage a little bit. About a, a half an amp. We're running 2.2 volts on this, and this is something I explained in the last video too, uh, that you can actually run this off of D-cell batteries or, you know, the small, you know, like a flashlight type battery you can 
operate this. You won't have much control over the amperage, but there's only so much amperage that you can get out of those batteries anyway. It's not like it's going to be a car battery where you could fry the finish on it. This thing can fry the finish, so I, I, I actually have to tune it in. Now what's nice about one of these, and I told you in the other video too, if you can get one of these if you're going to do any kind of ho even hobby plating, because you can dial on the exact amperage and voltage you need for stuff like this. I got this for anodizing a project about a year ago and now that I have it I'd like to use it for whatever uh, it just it gives you that little bit more control over your um, over your process and I gotta start the timer on this I'm gonna run it for about five minutes I've been talking now for oh, about a half a minute so um, but that won't that won't bother anything I'm gonna run it for a little over five minutes then and take it out and vapor blast it. Okay, so it's been five minutes here. And let's take that out. Should have disconnected that first, I guess. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm going to rinse that off real quick before the acid starts eating the finish. Now you'll see here the um, You'll see here how the fitting is nice gray looking matte finish. Now what I'm going to do is put that in the vapor blaster and put a bright satin silver finish on it. Here is here's what the fitting looks like after the first layer of uh, zinc and vapor blasting. Now I'm going to put on two more layers and vapor blast each one and then yellow chromate it turns out really nice. Can, can't see the silver solder or anything. It's like a brand new part. Get centered up as much as I can. And there we go. I just got done putting on the third layer of zinc plating and I went ahead and vapor blasted it already to get it ready for dipping in the yellow chromate. Now put it in there and keep it moving for uh, 15 seconds. Now set my stopwatch here. Okay, I'll go ahead and dry that off, and then uh, you can either let these parts sit for 24 hours to let that layer harden. And what it'll do is it looks bright gold now, but it'll it will darken with uh, time or heat. So I'm going to use a blow dryer, expose this to a little bit of heat, and I'll get it to cure within a few minutes. Here you can see the comparison between the two. Uh, so. It's kind of tough to see on camera, but you can see the there's a contrast between those two. This is a darker gold color after it's cured a while. And, well, I can touch this one with my bare hands. This one, I don't want to touch it until I get it cured because that layer is real soft yet. But see how it's a deep gold color and this is a light, a light color? Now that'll change after I cure it. Here's how the parts turned out. Turned out pretty nice. See, it's turned a deeper gold color after I cured the chromate on it. I have my coal stove going, um, putting out a lot of heat right now because it's it's only about 20 degrees out. So the air coming out of that stove, I measured it to be approximately 140 degrees. So I held these parts in front of the stove for oh, about five minutes to cure them and that deepened the coating and hardened it. It's just that simple. You can use a hair dryer too. Alright, I have to get these things packed up now and sent off to my customer, but I hope you enjoyed that process. If you guys would give me a thumbs up, I always appreciate that. It helps me get my videos out there to more people and subscribe too if you'd like. Okay, until next video, I will see you guys later.